So um, one of the things that some people who aren't familiar with Edwards don't know is that he was actually fired from his church. Yes. And he was fired. Uh, a lot of reasons played into it, but um, one of the key things, sort of the catalyst at the end, was a controversy over uh, communion. Mm-hmm. And so uh, maybe try to set up that controversy. What was it about and, and how he ran afoul of his congregation? Um, here's the... Uh, man, this is a complicated thing. Yeah, right. Um, the, in the New England Puritans were Pado baptists right? and uh, which meant that they uh, baptized infants. And because they had settled uh, New England and built the whole thing up from scratch, uh, your status with the church also affected your status status with the township or your citizenship or yep. you know who you were in that society. Um, so in England, people who thought like these New England Puritans did were dissenters. They were outside, but here they were the they were the establishment. Yeah, they were. Uh, so um, the halfway covenant was not the point where they decided to officially downgrade. Um, it was their attempt to keep the standards up. So this is what happened. Um, because they were, uh, because they were Pado Baptists, they baptized their babies, and that was virtually a universal uh, practice. Then, because they were um, hardline, experiential, you know, you must have an ex- uh, a conversion experience yeah. that you can credibly explain to us. Right. They linked that to the Lord's Supper. Okay. All right. So you would be baptized as an infant. And be in the church, and be in the society, and be in the in the thing. And then, if you had a Damascus Road experience, yep. then you were allowed to come to the table. Right. Okay. So far, so good. Now, what happens if you have people who grow up under that? They're baptized. They're members. They attend church all the time. Uh, Twenty-two years can go by pretty quick. Yep. They meet someone else in the same condition, uh-huh. uh, baptized but not communicant. They get married, uh-huh. and they have a kid, right? And they ask if their kid can be baptized. Yeah. Now that's what the halfway covenant was about. Because because the issue is is that because they haven't had the the Damascus Road experience, their status in terms of uh, are they born again or not? Right. Well, no, they're not because they haven't had the Damascus Road. Right. Experience. So they're they're not communicant, but they're they believe the truth of the Christian religion. Right. And that, so what the halfway covenant did was it said, okay, when they want their kid baptized, if, because if their child was not baptized, yeah. there are all sorts of citizenship issues and yeah. you know st- standing in the community issues and that sort of thing. So the halfway covenant said, um, if this non-communicant couple that haven't had the Damascus Road experience stand up in front of the church and profess their faith in the Christian religion and, in, in short, profess a, a, a sort of meet a standard that's much, much higher than anything done by the average evangelical today. Right. <laughs> right. I, we're going to bring up our child in the, yeah. uh, in the faith, and we believe the truth of the Christian religion, and we're, you know, we're committed. Then they would baptize the baby. That was the halfway covenant. Now, the, the, weird, the odd thing was, if, those, if that same family um, went to virtually any Reformed church in Europe, mm-hmm. they would have been received as full members. Right, Lord's table, and everything. Lord, everything. Lord's table, baptize the child. They would have been received as full members. But the New England Puritans were trying to hold the line on a, a, convul, a convulsive uh, Damascus Road experience, and that's the the Lord's table is where they uh, drew that line. Now, this is where I would part from Edwards and agree with him and part with him. I believe I believe in the absolute necessity of the new birth. I'm an evangelical Christian. There's two kinds of people in the world, the kind that go to heaven and the kind that go to hell. Some of those who go to hell are professing church members who go to hell. That, there must be something that distinguishes them, and it's the new heart that d- mm-hmm. distinguishes them. The, the danger is among cultural evangelicals is that we think we keep trying to figure out surefire external indicators of that new heart change, you know, either a convulsive conversion experience or some tradition speaking in tongues or, you know, there's got to be something that we can track. We've got to be able to tag this thing mm-hmm. and track it. So uh, the convulsive, and, and later I think Edwards was 
wiser when he's talking about the you know what are the marks of mm -hmm. a, a truly converted person. You're, it's not something you can tell in a convulsive moment of right. time. So, um, so they, the halfway covenant does that. Then um, Edwards fall in in um, in Northampton. His his, he followed his grandfather, yep. who Solomon Stoddard. Solomon Stoddard was kind of a an outlier in the Puritan world. Uh, something of a liberal, uh, liberal is the wrong word, I put quotation marks around right. liberal, yep. but sort of in that very tightly knit world, he was on the left of that a world. Looser, yeah, Lo yeah, right. Looser. So he believed that the Lord's Supper was a converting ordinance. Okay. Um, and so that he was much more likely to allow people who had not had this dramatic change to come to the Lord's table, but he was, but he would say, and I grant that they haven't been converted. They haven't had this. Yeah. Uh, but and, and, and because the thing is, is that it's not just that the ministers are saying you're not converted. It's that by their own testimony, a lot of times they'd say, well, no, I, I haven't had that. I'm not born right. again. I'm, I'm unregenerate. Right. But I've been baptized and I'm a member in good standing. And I believe all this. And I, be, and I believe it, but I, I haven't had this. Now, Solomon Stoddard um, wanted to admit those people to the table and in the in the hope that that this over over time this would help this would be a converting ordinance, so um, Solomon Stoddard was very w well respected and the church in Northampton, yeah. um, um, admi admired him and yeah. so forth. So Edwards um, replaces is is the heir to this pulpit um, that his grandfather had. So it's a family member thing. It's yep. a but Edwards was much more in sympathy with the more uh, strident evangelicalism yep. of the surrounding yep. of, uh, uh, the surrounding area, and so over. But he was not a fire breather either. He it's he sort of inherited this situation yeah. from Stoddard and sort of was worked with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a one incident. I forget the details. A young lady, I think. Yeah. Who um, wanted to who wanted to come to the table but hadn't had the, had, had that. so she would have under Stoddard no problem come to the table. And and Edwards didn't. It wasn't a throwdown. Absolutely not over my dead body. It was more that he wanted to put some sort of parameters or some sort of definition yeah. on it, and the church um, revolted, you know, mm -hmm. um, against this because they they really liked Stoddard's way of doing it, and so that's why. Uh, but Edwards, uh, even there, um, was I thought very mild and, and yeah. responsible given his ass assumptions of what was happening. He wasn't trying to do everything at once. Right. He just took one step, and but that was enough. Yeah, and and when it finally builds and builds, and they dismiss him, his his uh, farewell sermon is just an incredible example of um, charity to this congregation that he loves so much. So so but on, so maybe on the, on the theology of it, though, it seems like there is, regardless of whether we have a Damascus Road uh, requirement that you've got mm -hmm. to have seen, you know, Jesus in the third heaven or something in mm -hmm. order to to come to the table. The issue for Paedo-Baptists seems to be that you have people who are raised in the church and aren't moral monsters, right? They're not sleeping around, right. they're not, right. um, but they're also n not uh, positively demonstrating a lot of, say, fruit of the Spirit. Right. So they're just sort of, they're just good moral folk. Right. Um, and so it seems like that part of the thing that the Puritans and Edwards are concerned about is the, the purity of the church over generations. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so maybe you know, address that because that's that's the concern. Is let's let's keep the church pure by fencing the table by right. by retaining something that requires the new birth. Right. Um, and so uh, and so you, you're obviously saying that wasn't the way to go. So how do you how do you how deal would with it? that? I, hey, I would deal with it by not baptizing babies. Yeah. Don't but, don't uh, paint yourself. <laughs> you'd say don't yeah. paint yourself into that corner. Yeah. Exactly. Well, let me tell you why painting yourself into that corner is fine. Right. Um, Here's the uh, Baptists and Pado Baptists. Let's say you've got a Baptist church and a Pado Baptist church, and they're both cons they're both very concerned legitimately for the purity of the church over generations. Okay. There are two approaches that are being taken. We both want our nightclubs to be responsible places. Um, the Baptist nightclub hires uh, security guards to check everybody's ID at the door. Okay. Baptism. Oh, baptism. Believers. Baptism. The okay. Presbyterians hire big bouncers. Okay, so we let anybody in, but we pitch them out, <laughs> uh -huh. right? So the, when everything's running the way it ought to be, and they're both, and I'm assuming two churches concerned for 
the uh, right things. The, the right things. Um, the Baptist approach is anticipatory. Uh -huh. Don't let the bad actors in. And the the Reformed or the Pado Baptist uh, Pado Baptist Reformed response is let them in, and if they start to act up, Ooh. kick kick them out. Okay. All right. Now. Uh, easier said than done, someone's going to say, right. because of the, precisely because of the kind of people you're describing. They're not down at the saloon every night. Right. They, they're not shooting he's up. Not pick, the, you're not picking fights. He's not, he's just, but, but over time you get enough of those in a, in a nightclub. Right. And, you know, they, they, it's not they're a cool place anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're, they can vote you out and they can, there's right. a, right, so. right. Now, the, what I come back to here is in, in Proverbs, it says, strike this, uh, Strike the fool, and the simple learn wisdom. Okay. Okay. Churches, whether you're Baptist or Pado Baptist, churches that don't practice discipline have AIDS. They've they've got no way to fight off infection. Okay. And so what happens here is, in um, in a large congregation, let's say you've got, um, you know, let's say 500 or more people in a congregation, you will have opportunities to practice church discipline. Because Paul says in Galatians, when he's talking about witchcraft and envies and fightings and mm -hmm. adulteries and so forth, he says the works of the flesh are manifest. He says there's two ways. There's the way of the spirit and the way of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And he says the works of the flesh are manifest. Mm -hmm. Would mean they're obvious. Uh, they're obvious. Yeah. You've got handles. You can, you know, okay. at some point in the proceedings, uh, a man is going to run off with his secretary and ditch his wife, who's mm -hmm. still in the congregation. What will the congregation do? Now, I believe that if you have a faithful congregation that disciplines that man in the name of Jesus and excommunicates him for his mm -hmm. infidelity, you strike the fool, and the simple mm -hmm. learn wisdom. So that's the simple in that case are the sort of moral, maybe unregenerate members of the church who right. that's a wake-up call. Right. Oh, they're not fooling around here. Okay. Uh, they mean business. Uh -huh. You know, I might want to pay closer attention and listen to the gospel, or I might want to tiptoe out. Of, I'm, yeah. You know, I might want to find another church that's more conducive. And I th so I think that, um, and every pastor will tell you that there are people, the lights are on, but nobody's home. You know, mm -hmm. you, you're preaching away and, and you think, this person has not caused me a moment's trouble in the church, but I don't think they're getting anything. Yeah. Right. They're just here. And, it, and it's amazing how much can bounce off someone's forehead. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I don't think I'm called to peer into hearts and figure out that if I, if I have a, I call it a pastoral, if my pastoral vibe meter is buzzing and arcing, you know, mm -hmm. bzz, bzz, how's so and so doing? And there's nothing, that, there's no presenting problem. There's nothing, there's no works of the flesh that are manifest right. for me to deal with. Then how do I solve that? I don't think that that's something I can solve by kicking him out or chasing him or saying, do you really know? Um, do you really know Jesus? I think I need to address that in my preaching, in my, in my prayers and in my preaching. Hmm. I want my prayers and preaching to bring the rocks to the surface mm -hmm. and where I can get at them lawfully, yeah. right? Uh -huh. So, the, so the, the takeaway then is regardless of the, the pedo baptism or bat, the, the church discipline piece feels like it's the, it's the, the thing where there's some, at least some common ground that we've got to be doing that. Right. Because in the South, let's flip this around. In, in the Bible Belt, in the South, everybody's a, everybody's a Christian until they get their driver's license. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? And, um, and I, grew up in, I grew up in the Southern Baptist Church. And what would happen is when you get to be about 10, the deacons would do a sweep through the Sunday school. Yeah. It's time to go forward. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and all these kids would go forward. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's as much a cultural um, expectation yeah. in that system as the as baptism of infants is. And the churches are going to be just as nominal and just as dead if they don't discipline. On the far, on the far side. Uh, on the yeah. far side of the discipline. And just as lively and just as um, robust and evangelical if they do. 